Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to all the listeners, and uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Banu Patnagar. I'm with the World Health Organization's Regional Office for Europe. This is our last WHO Europe Twitter space, broadcasting from the 72nd Regional Committee uh, right here in beautiful Tel Aviv. And as we are being hosted by Israel's Ministry of Health, uh, for which we are very grateful we will be joined by them today as well. So today, member states will be discussing the Regional Digital Health Action Plan for 2023 to 2030. And before that, we have the pl pleasure to sit down with Ms. Esti Shelley, she's the Director of Digital Health in the Ministry of Health here in Israel, uh, and Mr. David Novillo, uh, Unit Head on Data and Digital Health with WHO Europe, to talk about this exciting topic. Thank you both for being here with us. So digital health is a vast area, ranging from data collection to digital literacy. So Mr. Novillo, if I could begin with you, when we talk about digital health in Europe, and in the context of a regional action plan, what are we talking about exactly? Thank you. Thank you so much, Bano, for, for your question. So it's a really good question because depends on the country that you are, maybe the definition that you will receive about digital health is completely different. So for us in WHO, we say that um, any digital solution that is aligned to achieve our goals is digital health. And that includes advancing universal health coverage, protecting people in emergencies, and enhancing health and well-being. And this definition is aligned with our uh, action plan that has, uh, has been already adopted and the four priorities that are linked to continue setting norms and standards, continue enhancing country capacity, continue, of course, promoting knowledge exchange and developing networks, and finally, look at what is working and scaling up at the regional, at the global level. Bueno. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so if I can stay with you, uh, da David, just for a moment, um, as we're just having some, yeah, this is normal for a live event. We're just having some technical issues with uh, Miss Shelley's audio. So we'll bring her in as soon as we can. Uh, but but uh, but David, if you could, if we could stay with the regional uh, action plan um, and just talk a little bit about the knowledge sharing component, which I believe is a, an important component of, of a digital health action plan. Could you tell us a bit more about the rationale for that? Why now and why WHO? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that, is, that was the first question that we were trying to respond when we started thinking of uh, proposing this action plan for the European region. First, what's new? So technologies have gained credibility in the context of responding to COVID-19 while supporting the de delivery of essential health services. Also, why now? There's a clear need for longer-term strategic investment to continue and scale up digitally post-pandemic as part of a reform approach to health service delivery to populations. Um, and finally, I would like to add that also why WHO Euro should be doing that. This so there are still gaps in the evidence base and a need to ensure that the digital transformation of health systems work to advance our three core pillars, as I said previously, advance universal health coverage, protect the public in times of emergencies, and enhance health and well-being. All of this should be um, back up by data and evidence, and that is an area working in, in digital health that should be strengthened, and we are currently working on that. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I think we have our uh, technical issues sorted now. So, uh, it, so I believe Israel is one of the member states that really leads by example in this area of digital health. Uh, as far as I know, just this May, 19 applicants were selected under a new digital health initiative that will partner healthcare facilities, such as hospitals, with tech startups. Uh, to build digital infrastructure required for things like anonymized data sharing. So I'd like to bring in Ms. Uh, Esti Shelley now. M Ms. Shelley, can you tell us a little bit more about this initiative, firstly? And also, what previous experiences does this build on? And are there any outcomes, importantly, that are already visible? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm happy to join. Um, so what we realized in Israel, and it's been started like a few years ago, uh, is that health organizations need some government support in order to work with the industry. 
it's not enough to expect them to have the uh, data available <clears throat> and all the security measures available to collaborate with startups and other companies. Now, you can ask yourself why, why it is important that health organizations will work with the industry. But what we realize in Israel, Israel is a very small country and the tiny market. And we realize that if we won't collaborate with the industry, the solutions and the products that we will see here won't be suitable to uh, our healthcare system needs. So in order to promote development of all kinds of solutions that will fit our needs, we need to work closely hand by hand with startups and innovation ecosystem here in Israel. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, but uh, just going back to something I also just mentioned there, are there any measurable results yet? Are there any visible outcomes of these kinds of interventions? How effective are they? So in the, in the interventions and the examples that we see in Israel are very effective. Some of them, some are failing, and this is good to have a quick and fast fail. Uh, but we do see some uh, good examples, for example, in fall prevention of elderly uh, patients, where we started to work with uh, one uh, Israeli company that had uh, already FDA approval. And after piloting it in one of the largest HMO in Israel, we uh, found out that we can buy uh, augmented reality training to reduce the elderly fall in 70% which is a huge uh, impact on the healthcare system. And that's just one example. We have several more. Fascinating. That's uh, very interesting. So uh, it's really nice, though, to hear about some of these collaborations between hospitals and startups. So the knowledge that is gained from these experiences, which you have just shared a little bit of, are these transferable to other member states of varying sizes? You mentioned Israel's small size. So that's one question. Uh, and also, what would you recommend to countries in our region uh, that are planning similar programs? How, how should they go about it? So it's, uh, to say briefly, it's trans transferable. Um, we try to put a lot of effort in sharing the knowledge and concluding the results. So not only other countries, but also other organizations, even here in Israel, will benefit from uh, the try and, uh, and the results of the other uh, institutes. We know that healthcare system uh, is based on progress that is being done through research and evaluation and evidence. And this is something that we are promoting and make sure that digital health solutions will also uh, benefit from evidence generation, as we know that this is one of the weak points of digital health technologies. Uh, and if I would try to give some advice to uh, other countries in this area, is that the results or the solutions are not available um, in-house most of the time. We have to work closely with the academia and the industry and the healthcare system um, in order to promote the accurate and effective digital health solutions. Thank you. Um, very interesting. I, I, I'm, re I'm recalling uh, an example that, that our regional director gave just uh, an hour or two ago about an amazing initiative here in Israel where uh, midwives are able to assess the fetus of, of pregnant women remotely uh, through, through sort of digital health solutions. So really uh, pioneering work, which, uh, which we hope to see translated in, into other member states uh, in the region. So moving on, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, where we see the biggest potential for digital health in the coming years. The, the word AI has been thrown around, artificial intelligence, big data. So I'd like to turn to Mr. Novillo first. Uh, uh, David, what, what do you think? What are the biggest growth areas or potentials for digital health? Thank you, Vano. So very basic and simple. Uh, we think that the biggest potential is to ensure that digital solutions are aligned to achieve health goals. And that is something that sometimes we're missing the perspective. But also the digitalization of health information systems, where health information systems are strong, can help all countries to take the um, evidence-based decisions to address health challenges and, and policies. 
Great. And uh, over to you, Ms. Shelley. What, what do you see as the biggest potential? I think the biggest potential is to give the digital tools to the uh, professionals, to the physician and nurses and other uh, healthcare professionals to really improve and make more efficient uh, work. We see the flow and the huge amount of data that all those uh, professionals face. And there is no single person that is able to, to take uh, good decisions in this uh, sphere. And this is why we believe that those tools can really be beneficial to the effectiveness and efficiency of healthcare systems. Thank you. So as a final question to you both, actually, um, before you, you leave us to rejoin the, the, the regional committee and, and work on this digital health action plan, uh, what do you see as the most significant challenge? Uh, we do see criticisms from various quarters about the use, of, uh, certainly on issues to do with privacy, for example, um, or misuse of data potentially. So what are you, do you think, we've spoken about opportunities, uh, and growth areas. So what are the challenges to overcome in the spaces of, of digital health? First, to Ms. Shelley, please. I think our biggest challenge, our biggest challenge is that there, are, there is a conception that people are expecting from uh, to be well, like one technology or one digital health solution that will solve all the problems. And I think that's one challenge to understand that without redesigning the healthcare system and changing how healthcare is being practiced, we won't be able to enjoy the, the benefits of digital health. And I think the, the, the gap between the expectation and the implementation, can, it's, it's a real challenge. And we can see that during COVID, we saw the trend that come to huge percentage of use of telehealth. And after two years, people are saying, oh, telehealth is not working good enough. But that's not the case. What we should do better is more a smart uh, use in the telehealth and other uh, health technology services. Fascinating. Uh, David, what about you? What do you see as some of the biggest challenges? Thank you, Bano. In terms of technology, I think we already have what we need to have to move forward with digital health. Digitalization is not the problem. We are missing governance, proper legislation, and policies. So we need to focus our discussions in how to progress digital health around these three topics. We are focusing all the time about digitalization and technologies, and the discussion will be should be around governance, legislation, and policies. And I will also to, to complement that uh, right now, the regional office, um, WHO regional office in Europe, is working a regional report on the status of digital health in the European region. Will be produced and published later this year. And we will like to provide an update in the European region about the status of digital health that will focus on these three topics so we can move all together, leaving no one behind. Great. I, I did say that that was the last question, but I'd like to ask one more. Um, that's fine. That's fine. I'm I'm going off the cuff here because I think it's really interesting that you talk about um, you know policy legislation that the problem isn't digitization per se, but what about uptake? What about um, uh, conversion of people, patients uh, uh, that that want to use digital health? Right. So how how would you address patients and consumers who might be reluctant uh, to to go down the digital health route. And I'm thinking particularly of populations like the elderly, perhaps, or people who might not be as digitally literate. H how do you tackle that, Ms. Shelley? We used to think and worry about those people who are less uh, literate in the di digital world. But I must say that the patients and the public are much more flexible and agile to digital technologies in many, many, many aspects and fields, not only healthcare. The resistance that we see and the skepticism that we see is mostly from uh, the healthcare system itself, the physician, the nurses and other health professionals. So actually what we are targeting is those populations because this transition is not very easy and uh, natural for them. And I totally get it because of professional security, of how they perceive medicine and medical care. But that's, uh, I must say, a bigger challenge than the patients. 
That's really interesting. David, would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, absolutely. Always agree, actually, with, with ST. Um, uh, also, I would like to add that um, looking at our action plan, and of course, um, all the colleagues that are connected today are welcome to, to look at the plan. It's publicly available. It's a very short document. Um, and when you look at the guiding principles that we are proposing, actually, place the individual the center of trustworthy care delivered digitally is our top priority because implementing digital solutions without involving the patient, the population, and the health workers is setting up a project for failure. So that is the reason we will work together with everyone, particularly with member states, to ensure that there is this inclusion from these uh, important uh, populations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, you've certainly given our listeners some food for thought, both of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Digital health really is one of the most interesting topics uh, on the regional committee's agenda. And I don't think 15 minutes or however long we've gone uh, is, is enough to scratch the surface. So uh, for our listeners, you can find much more information, articles, podcasts, publications on the WHO Europe website. This was our last Twitter space from the Regional Committee. Uh, proceedings end later today. Uh, you can listen to the recording of this and previous Twitter spaces on behavioural and cultural insights and on long COVID uh, on our Twitter account. And they will also be featured in our Health in Europe podcast series, uh, which will be available on our website soon. So all this left for me to say is thank you, uh, Ms. Shelley. Thank you, Mr. Novillo. Uh, and thank you, all of you, for listening. Uh, stay healthy and take care.